Many producers in Saskatchewan have saline areas in the field which are unproductive for growing cereals or canola. But what if we could get a forage to grow in these areas instead of foxtail barley and kochia? Then maybe they would show some production value. It can be difficult to seed these areas in spring due to excess of moisture and the time constraints as producers are busy seeding their cash crops. However, what about dormant seeding some forages in late fall when soil temperatures are cold enough to prevent seed germination? In late fall, you are more likely to support your equipment and come the following spring, the seed will be in the ground, taking advantage of the early season moisture, which may also dilute the salinity enough to get the seeds to germinate. So, with financial support from the Ministries Adopt program and the Saskatchewan Cattlemen's Association, the East Central Research Foundation and Parkland College devised a demonstration near Yorkton, Saskatchewan. In On October 23, 2020, we seeded the following treatments. AC Saltlander is a variety of green wheatgrass, which has a salinity tolerance similar to tall wheatgrass. It was developed by the Semi-Arid Prairie Agricultural Research Center out of Swift Current. Green wheatgrass has better forage quality than tall wheatgrass, and it's more palatable. It's well suited for pasture and hayland. In contrast, tall wheatgrass is only suited for hayland. However, tall wheatgrass is also more tolerant to spring flooding than green wheatgrass, which is certainly a problem in saline areas. Carlton Smooth Brome Grass is not saline tolerant and was included for comparison. Alfalfa is generally not tolerant of saline soils either. However, there are a few varieties which have been bred with greater tolerance. Barricade was an example of such a variety that was used in our demonstration. 4030 is a conventional alfalfa that is not tolerant to salinity. The demonstration also looked at a salt-tolerant combination of AC Saltlander with Barricade Alfalfa against a conventional combination of Carlton Smooth Brome Grass plus 4030 Alfalfa. Each of these treatments were replicated twice and were seeded into plots 10 feet wide by 70 feet long in order to traverse all the salinity levels of the soil. Here is the trial shortly after seeding. The white stuff in the pitcher is not salt. It's snow. The most saline area in the south end of the pitcher is where there was little to no plant material. As we move to the north, the salinity decreases and we enter the barley stubble. Unfortunately, the alfalfa, whether it was tolerant to salinity or not, did not survive the dormant seeding in any portion of the trial. Since the alfalfa didn't survive, it was decided to spray the whole trial with prestige in order to control the broadleaf weed issues. Unfortunately, there was nothing that could be done to control the heavy population of foxtail barley in the less saline area to the north. At the far south end of the field, where the soil salinity was extreme, none of the plant species grew, and I named this the dead zone. However, perennial grasses were able to get established in the transition zone between the dead zone and the fox pit, foxtail barley. They were also present within the foxtail barley. However, due to heavy competition and the difficulty of separating grass species, establishment data was not taken from the foxtail barley area. It was only taken from the transition zone. Because the alfalfa component didn't survive, this changed our treatment descriptions and gave us the opportunity to look at AC Saltlander and Carlton Smooth Brome Grass at lower seeding rates. Not surprisingly, higher seeding rates provided higher plant populations. Tall wheatgrass at 12 pounds per acre and AC Saltlander at 10 pounds per acre provided the best emergence. Dry matter yields were highest with tall wheatgrass, followed by AC Saltlander and then Brome Grass. But a picture is worth a thousand words, so let's go to our man in the field, me, and get a closer look at these plots. In this strip here we have saltlander wheatgrass seeded. You can see in this really salty strip here it's been taken out totally. But as the salt declines we have some better looking spots here where the saltlander has successfully established where nothing else 
is establishing grass wise. As we progress out of the saltier area, we start coming to a region where the foxtail barley has outcompeted everything. And you, the salt lander's in there, but it's getting outcompeted severely by the foxtail barley. In this strip, we have the tall wheat grass, and you can see it comes and goes depending upon the variability of salt in the soil. Again, when we come to the foxtail barley at the back where the soil is less saline, um, we have a lot of foxtail barley. But you can see that the tall wheatgrass is in there still, poking its heads above the foxtail barley. So there you have it. We were able to successfully establish perennial grasses in part of the saline area with dormant seeding but not with alfalfa. Didn't matter w whether it was saline tolerant or not. I don't know why alfalfa was unsuccessful, but one of our viewers did make this prediction. Tall wheatgrass looked to be establishing the best, but AC Saltlander was doing a good job too. Unsurprisingly, smooth brome grass did not establish well. The saline tolerant grasses were also present in the foxtail barley, but they were under heavy competition. It would have been interesting to see if these grasses would eventually outcompete the foxtail barley over time. Perhaps keeping the area mowed or swathed to prevent seed production of the foxtail barley would favor the salt tolerant grasses, as the foxtail barley is a short lived perennial that reproduces by seed. It's just a thought. Anyway, you can see it is challenging to get perennials established in a saline area, and that weed control also needs to be part of the plan. Mature foxtail barley must be cultivated or sprayed out with glyphosate prior to seeding. This will help, but you may still have a lot of foxtail barley seedlings to contend with the following spring. However, other studies have found AC Saltlander can be competitive, reducing foxtail barley populations by up to 80%.